Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. My name's Dean and today we're going to be looking at how to change the remote keypad battery on the Everest. We're going to be looking at how to start the car if that battery becomes flat. We're going to be looking at how to use the lock and unlock features on the vehicle and how to use the global opening and closing of the windows. So if you like what you see, please like, share and subscribe and let's get started. So here we are, we're going to look at changing the battery in the passive remote for the Ford Everest. And for this, you're going to need a couple of little tools. First thing we're going to need is a coin, a five cent coin works just perfectly, and a little tiny screwdriver just to pop the battery out once we're in the inside the remote. So let's go ahead and have a look inside the remote. The first thing we need to do is push down on the little button here and remove the mechanical key. And then the next thing we need is that coin. So we're going to get the coin, look for the little slot on the back of the battery cover, put in the five cent coin and twist. And if you're lucky, the lid will pop off. If not, just pull it off with a little bit of force. You're not going to break it. And that gives us access to the battery. So inside here, you'll see a little square. Pop the screwdriver inside the square and just flick the battery out. Simple as that. With the new battery, I recommend you grab it by the edges of the battery. If you grab it across the face, there's a good chance you're going to discharge that battery and end up with a flat battery before you begin. So, new battery, pop it inside the remote, push it down into position, grab our cover, the narrow end goes on first, pop that in there, and simply squeeze the lid back down on the remote. Next thing to do, grab our mechanical key, clip it back into position, and job done. Right guys, so we've looked at how to change the battery in the remote, but what happens if the battery in the remote's flat uh, when you get back to your vehicle? Well, inside the car there is a backup slot where you can put the key and the vehicle will read the information from the key and allow you to start the car. So just so you can see I'm not cheating, I've actually taken the battery out of our remote. I'm gonna pop the cover back on and we'll show you how to get into the car. First thing you need to do is grab the mechanical key. We're gonna unlock the car and we're gonna open the door. And you may get a warning telling you that the alarm is gonna go off unless you start the vehicle. Mine hasn't come on because I've only just recently locked the car. So I'll pop the mechanical key back in. And if you look in our cup holder here, we're gonna use the back cup holder. This is the backup slot. And the key has to be facing long ways in the vehicle with the buttons facing up. Can be this way or this way, but not this way. So let's pop the key in there, make sure it's in the slot and then we'll be able to push our foot on the brake and start our vehicle. And off we go. Easy as that. Right guys, so the next thing we're gonna look at is another nifty little function, and that is how to change the locking function on the car. So at the moment, this car's um, set up so that when we unlock it, only the driver's door unlocks. You can change that quite easily to unlock all four doors. So if you've got the family with you and you want everybody to be able to get into the car when you unlock it, you can change it to all four doors unlocking. If you're in a bit of a tight spot or a security situation where you just want the driver's door open, you can change it to that. So first of all, let's unlock the car and we'll see how this one's set up so we can get into the driver's door. But the other doors are currently locked. So quite easy to change this function, just using the remote keypad. So I'm just gonna lock it again. Now the first thing we do is we just grab the remote, hold the unlock and the lock button together and you'll watch the indicator on the mirror flash. Once it flashes, it tells us that it's changed the setting, there we go. And now when we unlock, it will unlock all four doors on the vehicle. So now everybody can jump in. Now to change that back, all you have to do is once again hold the unlock and the lock button down until you see that indicator flash. There we go. And now we've changed it back to just unlock the driver's door. So let's just give it a go. We'll lock it. And we'll unlock it. And now we've got the driver's door, but the other doors remain locked. Easy peasy. 
Okay guys, finally we're gonna look at another nifty little feature built into the Ford Everest and also some of the other Ford models. So this is called Global Opening and Global Closing and it allows us to open and close the windows on the car remotely using the keypad. So this is great if the car's locked in a, on a hot day and you want to allow some air in, you can unwind the windows so that when you jump in you don't burn your bum on the seat. And conversely, if the car is in the backyard with the windows down and you wish to wind them up because it started to rain, then you can wind them up remotely without getting wet. So firstly, to get those windows down, what we're going to need is the, is the remote keypad and we're going to push the unlock button and then push it again and hold. So push it once, push it twice and hold and eventually those windows will come down. Perfect. And to get those windows back up, we simply push the lock button and we hold it and the windows will wind themselves back up. Simple. Okay guys, well thanks for watching. Today we've looked at how to change the remote keypad battery. How to start a car should that battery be flat. We've looked at the lock and unlock features on the car. We've also looked at the global opening and closing functions. If you liked what you see, please like, share and subscribe to the video. And we'll see you next time.